So we talked about available evidence compared to absent evidence. And with an inductive argument, you know, you have to use available evidence. You don't get to rely on absent evidence. Okay, so that's one way uh, the strength is determined <laughs> uh, with evidence. Uh, another way is the balance of evidence, right? The balance of evidence, or whether you're using right all the available evidence. And uh, you know, for, as far as evidence is concerned, well, there's either supporting evidence or there's defeating evidence. Okay. Supporting evidence is, well. <laughs> Probably simply stated, right? It's the evidence that supports the conclusion or, or uh, lends probability, right? And reinforces the conclusion. Okay, defeating evidence is evidence that it, it gives us a conclusion contrary to the one we're looking for or, or for the conclusion of the argument. Now, as I've said, um, inductive arguments are ones where the truth of the premises or the evidence makes the conclusion more likely to be true, but not necessarily. And part of the reason for this is you're, you're, you're going to have defeating evidence. It's going to come up. Now, just because you have defeating evidence doesn't you know, overwhelm the conclusion, at least not always, but at least sometimes it's going to make the conclusion less likely to be true. So I'll, I'll use an example. So returning our, to our uh, talk about aliens, right? Well, you know, part of the available evidence is all the planets, the conditions for life, the stars, you know, the conditions are out there. There's lots and lots of planets, lots and lots of stars. And, uh, you know, a certain frequency or rate, not frequency, a certain ratio of them, not frequency, no, that, that's right, a certain frequency of them uh, could support life. Right? And this is what the Drake equation is supposed to tell us. Well, one of the things that's considered in the Drake equation and uh, whether there is life on other planets is uh, the age of the universe. And the universe has been around a really, really long time. So according to you know, some of the people that think about this, like, look, look since the, the universe has been around a long time, we, we can't be the first, right? We can't be the first form of life in the universe. The universe is over, I think it's three, 13 trillion years old. I'm sure somebody's gonna correct me in the comments. Um, I think it's something like 13 trillion years old. Well, golly, sure looks like, uh, you know, with the number of planets that are out there and conditions that are out there. Our star is, is young, but it, it's not, you know, our star is young, right? <laughs> I forget how long ago our star started. It wasn't the beginning of the universe, right? Um, uh, and there's lots of other stars out there. So one thought is, well, yeah, there, there's a long time has passed and the conditions are ripe for, for life, at least in some parts of the universe. So by now there should have been a, a not only life, but intelligent life, and not only intelligent life, but life that would have reached the confines of its solar system and made contact with other solar systems and other forms of life. Right? You know, think Star Trek and the Federation of Planets, right? But you know, aliens. <laughs> you also know, the Vulcans, the Klingons, all these Romulans, all the others, all these other forms of life. They started their own civilizations. Okay. So the conditions are right for the universe, but. This is what's called the Fermi paradox. Oh, so, well, yeah, the conditions are right. There should be an ancient, advanced civilization out there. But we never heard from them. We've never heard anything. We can't detect them. We haven't seen them. Whether there is life out there, golly, it doesn't look like it because we've had no contact. Well, that the fact that we haven't had contact, we haven't seen this life out there, that's defeating evidence. There's lots of supporting evidence. Number of planets, green zone, compounds, stars, all this other stuff, right? Organic compounds, all this stuff is out there. Sure, there's lots of supporting evidence, but there's also defeating evidence. We haven't, we haven't uh, had any contact with other civilizations. We haven't been able to see them. I mean, nothing with radio or light or, or warp drive. <laughs> if we're going to go in, I mean, this is the science fiction part of Star Trek. That's the fiction part. Um, you know, we haven't had any sort of contact like that. Uh, okay. Why not? We should have, right? Why haven't we? So when we're talking about you know, all the available evidence, right? Whether you have complete evidence, the balance of evidence, right? That means you have to consider both the supporting evidence and the defeating evidence. You can't just pick your favorite, 
right? <laughs> you can't just pick one over the other to support your conclusion. You have to consider all of it. And sometimes that's painful because it leads to a conclusion that you don't want to accept. But that's where the evidence goes. Right? <laughs> so um, if you're, you know, you, you, you have, when you're considering the conclusion, you have to consider the balance of the evidence, the supporting versus the defeating. Uh, if you don't, right, it's called the fallacy of incomplete evidence. And arguably, all uh, fallacies in inductive logic boil down to the fallacy of incomplete evidence of some form or another of that. So the strength of the conclusion in an inductive argument is determined right, by using the available evidence and that it's complete. Right? And the supporting evidence, you know, if, you're, if the evidence supports the conclusion, right, if it's strong, like right, the supporting evidence outweighs any defeating evidence. Uh, if the defeating evidence outweighs the supporting, well, then you have to reject that conclusion, right? It's, it's too weak. It's too, too weak. All right, so next we're, uh, we've got, you know, available evidence versus absent, supporting versus defeating, got complete evidence, all right, the balance of evidence. Okay, the next thing to consider are the kinds of evidence. And not all evidence, not all probabilities are the same thing. <laughs>